Our learning intention for this video is that staff will learn about creating Google quizzes for formative assessment. This will include creating a quiz, modifying the quiz settings, adding different question types and uploads, adding text, images, videos and sections, giving feedback to answers, including documents and videos, changing your quiz appearance, and finally understanding and responding to student responses. So I've already logged into my Google account. I'm in Google Drive and I'm going to click on New. I'm going to scroll down to More, and then I'm going to select Google Forms to create my form. The first thing I'm going to do is give the form a title, just going to make it easier to find. And then I'm going to click in the top left, use the same name. Next, I click on Settings, and I'm going to go through to Quizzes, and this is where I can make it into a quiz. Turning the form into a quiz enables point values for each of the items, and it also enables auto marking. There's some other options there you might like to look at before clicking Save. Now it's time to create the first question. This one's going to be about the capital city of Australia. Uh, and so as we type it in, Google's pretty smart, and it goes and finds a, an option that might be the correct option. Now, the other suggestions weren't so great, so we're going to type in our, our other options for this particular multiple choice question. And each time we click on Add Option, we can add another option for the students to click on. Of course, we can change the order, and we can also add pictures to go along with our suggested questions. Now, when I click on the Answer key, it gives me an opportunity to set the points, but also add feedback for incorrect and correct answers. In this case, if the student answers incorrectly, we're going to give them some feedback and offer them the opportunity to watch a movie which will help them learn about this particular piece of knowledge. So we're going to click on the little YouTube link there. I'm going to search for a movie about capital cities of Australia and I'm going to select the movie and add it in. Now I'm going to click Save and it's going to save that for the student and we'll be able to see what will happen when the student gets the incorrect answer. I could have added feedback for the correct answer, which I'm going to do now. I'll click on the edit button and I'm going to click on correct answers and then give some feedback for the student when they answer correctly. So I'm going to click done on that question and I have a single question there with automatic marking, a point value and also feedback for the correct and incorrect answers. One more option you might like to explore is the three dot menu where we can shuffle the order of the answers, which makes it a little bit more challenging for the students who want to cheat. I'll add my next question by clicking on the plus button. And by default, it's multiple choice, but if I click where it says multiple choice, I get a range of options. It's worth becoming familiar with the different question types because different types of questions lend themselves to different types of knowledge and assessing that knowledge. One question type that you may not have experienced before is the file upload option. This will let users submit a file to your Google Drive. You can click continue and then complete the question or the instructions for the students for this file upload. Don't forget to add a points value if that's appropriate. And as always, we can choose whether this question is required or not. If the question is required, the student won't be able to submit the quiz unless they've completed that question. Now we've added questions from scratch, but we can also choose questions that have been created in other Google quizzes or Google Forms and add them to this form. So in this case, I'm grabbing a question from a teacher in another school, and I'm just gonna tick the box on the questions that I want to use, and they'll be added to this quiz. So we can be sharing across our faculties and across our different schools within the system. So this is a mass question that's come in, uh, and it's imported along with the answers. At any stage, I can grab the little dragger, which is sitting on top of a question, and change the order of the questions to put them in the right format. I'm now going to click back on the Import Question button, and I'm going to import another question from another quiz. Once I've selected the quiz, the quiz will open up in the sidebar and I'll be able to select the questions that I wish to have inserted into my new quiz. The next option down on the right is adding a text section, and this will let me organize the document and make it easier for the students to follow. 
The next option down is images, which allows you to change the appearance of your quiz. And in this case, I'm just going to do a Google search from within the quiz for an image related to mathematics, because this section is on mathematics. The next option down is an option to insert a YouTube video. We can use the YouTube video as a way of teaching the students new content or refreshing an idea. Or in this particular scenario, because we've asked the students to use their webcam to take a picture of work they've created, I'm going to find a movie that will show them how to do that in case they don't have that skill set. So I'll do my search. YouTube will find the movie for me and I'll click on the movie and then press select. Of course, always check that the movie is suitable before sending the form to the students. Now the content of our quiz is, is all there, but it looks a little bit boring. So we're going to go to the top and click on the customize button, which is just next to the eye. And we can choose a header or we can we even upload our own photo. Once we've selected our photo or uploaded our own photo, we're going to click on insert and that will be added to the theme. We can also change our background color, theme color, etc. Now we're going to click on the little eye button at the top. Uh, and it's going to give us a preview of our quiz. Make sure the questions are in the order that we want. Make sure that it looks exactly the way we want it to. The escape button will get us out of preview. And we're going to click on settings and just have a quick look in there before we send it to the students. This quiz is restricted to users from our system, which means they'll need to be logged into their Google account to complete the quiz. The next option is presentation, where I can show a progress bar for the student, shuffle the question order, etc. It's worth double checking the quiz option as well, just to make sure there's no settings that you want to change. Click the save button to exit the settings. And now it's time to send our quiz to the students. You can either email it to the students using your class email address or individual student emails, or you can grab the link by clicking on the link button. And this will allow you to take the link and put it into Google Classroom or, or anywhere else that you might be interacting with the students. The summary report that you receive after the students have completed the quiz is a great formative assessment tool. It allows you to quickly check for student understanding, identify areas that require revision, and once we look at the individual students, we can discover the students who require extension and those who require support. We also have the opportunity to look at the students' answers add additional correct answers, identify common misunderstandings, and give feedback to the students. Don't forget to click save after you've made adjustments. This quiz can now be used with your class, with your entire school, or in fact any school in the diocese. You can also access the questions in any other quiz that you might be creating.